namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambodassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambodassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambodassa good evening everyone <clears throat> Last week we talked about rights and riches, rights and riches. <clears throat> I also talk about, I also quote, uh, what's a Mr. Yuve Noah Harari. He is a, currently is a, one of the well-known uh, hist historians. So he said that if you want to know the ultimate truth of life, If we want to know our ultimate truth in our life, and rights and riches are huge obstacles. It's truth, because if you go to any religions, including Buddhism, eh? <laughs> any religion, so there are a lot of rights and riches. So if you cannot overcome all these rights and riches, then you cannot understand the ultimate truth of life. <clears throat> then what is rights and riches? <clears throat> I will quote uh, Oxford Dictionary because I think, uh, I hope you already know, but uh, we need to know proper understanding according to uh, English. English language, and also later I will talk about according to Buddhism, rights and riches. So actually, dictionary uh, defined uh, using, you know, separate definition. Right. What is the right? It's ceremony performed by a particular group of people, often for religious purposes like a funeral, like a marriage, like a, uh, actually so many things, right? So many things. So when you observe marriage, I think you normally go wedding ceremony, right? You observe those ceremony. You can go to Chinese wedding ceremony, Malay wedding ceremony, Sri Lankan, Burmese, Thai, so they have a different way of performing, right? Different way of performing. What is, actually, what is the, I want to say, the main purpose of rising, I want to say, marriage ceremony? I think that the most important thing is a promise, right? Husband and wife, they promise to stay the whole life. So, uh, faithfully. But when you look at uh, different wedding ceremony, you will see that a lot of, you know, a uh, lot of things, right? A lot of things. Especially uh, relig religious ceremony uh, performed by priests. Performed by priests. Actually in Buddhism, so we are not allowed to do that. Marriage in Buddhism is quite secular. It is uh, not in, uh, nothing to do with the religion, right? Religions. So it, are called, it can be called even uh, marriage or wedding ceremony. Called there, there are a lot of right, right? A lot of right. And also, when you look at the temple, when you look at the church, when you look at the mosques, synagogue, many other religious institutions, you will see that they perform a lot of ceremonies. What are the purpose? You know, we have a diff uh, they have a different purpose. 
So if you know the soda that, I, that we, were we were learning today, I think you will know the purpose, the ultimate purpose, ultimate truth of our life, right? <clears throat> what, are, what are the rituals? Ritual me is a series of actions that are always performed in the same way, especially as a part of religious ceremony. As a part of religious ceremony, usually there are a lot of rituals in every religion. Buddhism is not exception, right? Buddhism also including. So therefore, uh, Keshe Damananda said that. I like, you know, the way he writes. Rites and rituals are important to attract public. Because of rites and rituals, people come to religious institutions. And there are only a few people who come to learn the real teaching, actually. <laughs> it's really this is quite natural, it's quite natural. I'm not saying that rites and rituals are not important. They are important to attract people. But Bandi Kishwe Damana said that we can practice Buddhism without all these rites and rituals. If you can practice Buddhist teaching without all the rites and rituals, the best, that will be the best. <clears throat> so when you look at here, uh, so th for that reason, Bhikkhu Bori normally translated rites and ceremony. You know? So when you look at the ceremony performed by any, any religions, you know, so these are called rites and rituals. But of course, behind them, there are some meanings, right? Some meanings. Rites and rituals. <clears throat> Bhikkhu Bori translates as the adherent to rites and rituals. Silabra Brahmasa. This is a, one of the clinging, one of the attachment. It is a, one of the four type of clinging or attachment that people attach too much. Normally, we have a lot of attachment, a lot of clinging to rites and rituals. So people may think that without religious rites and rituals, your marriage is not performed. You know? There are some religions, they say that without involvement of religious priests or you know, religious um, people, leaders, so their marriage is not an official one like that. But there's no such a thing in Buddhism. So marriage, wedding, it's just a secular affair. If two persons agree to get married, that's all, that's all. And also, there are a lot of, you know, um, we have four types of clinging. Clinging to sensual pleasures. We have a lot of clinging to sensual pleasures. Another one is clinging to wrong view. We have clinging to wrong view with so many wrong views. And then clinging to um, theory of soul. You know, people, when, I, when we talk about soul, soul theory, many people have a difficulty to believe, to accept, because we have a clinging to atta, you know. Even Buddhists, many Buddhists, one way or another, we, are, we have a lot of clinging to our soul, you know. So next one is adherent to rites and rituals. <clears throat> it is the belief that the performance of rites and ceremonies constitutes the meaning to the means to liberation or the means to purity. Many people may think that after attending, after performing uh, rites and rituals, you, you are convinced that you became pure. You got purity. You are liberated from your sins like that, right? Later we will learn in detail. So according to Buddhism, 
actually, I like what Mahasi Siaro said that any type of practices that are outside of the noble evil path can be called as adherent to rising rich, clinging to rising riches. So if you practice the noble evil path, of course, not easy, right? Not easy. <clears throat> When you are make, uh, when you are building a new house, where people start to come, you know, probably start to consult with the um, astrologer, Feng Shui, right? <laughs> Feng Shui, right? These are rising rituals, rising rituals. People want to get married, they will listen to uh, astrology like that, right? They were trying to discuss uh, trying to get the an auspicious day, an auspicious day. So they choose an auspicious day like that. See so these are rice and rituals according to Bodhisin. So what are the noble eightfold path? Right view. You must have a right understanding. If you have a right understanding you have a right thought or right intention in your mind. So if you have a right intention and right attitude in your mind, your speech, your action, your livelihood will be good, right? Very simple, right? Very simple. You must have a right understanding. Today we are learning the concept of purity, you know? Theory of purity according to, according to Bodhism, to have a right, right view or right understanding. <clears throat> It's not difficult, it's very simple, you know, very simple one. Normally, religions, most of the religion make complicated. <laughs> so they're trying to complicate, um, you know, they, because of that, they do a lot of rites and rituals. Rites and rituals are trying to block right understanding. People cannot, you know, go beyond that, go beyond that. If you go beyond rights and rituals, so um, you think that you are trying to break in, you know, uh, barriers, barriers like that. Then, based on more, morality, sila, you will have a right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. So these are the noble eightfold path. So in next topic, we'll learn in details. So according to, of course, according to um, Mazi Seado, actually I'm trying to find out what he said, but I couldn't find out this statement. So Mazi Seado is one of the well-known meditation masters in Myanmar, <coughs> where was in Pali Canon, and also uh, he is a good practitioner. When you look at Mahasati Patana Soda, Dikani Gaya Soda number 22, the Nova Eightfold Path is stated as the only way, there's only way for the beautification of beings, for overcoming of suffering. If you want to overcome your suffering, your problem, you have to do, you have to practice the noble eightfold path, trying to have a right view, right understanding. Then if you have a right understanding, you will have a right thought, right attitude, right intention. Then if you have a right intention, right attitude, then your speech, your action, your livelihood will be right. Then you have a right action, uh, right effect, right mindfulness and right concentration. When you have a right concentration, you will have a right knowledge. Then if you have a right knowledge, right liberation. Liberation from suffering. Suffering. So therefore, Mahasiddhi Patana Sutta said that the noble eightfold path is the only way to overcome our suffering. Or purification of beings. Purification of beings. Only someone who began stream intera, adherent to rites and ritual, can be removed completely. 
So is that the understanding this line is very important. As long as you are not sort of fan, you will still have this one. Click into rise and retrace. Click into rise and retrace. So as a mank, as a mank, so we are uh, likely to free from rise and retrace. We don't care. We don't care who whose direction your house face. You know, on which day you take a trip. You know. On which number you stay, you know? The number of your house, not a problem. And the day you travel, not a problem. So the day you get married, not a problem. So and also some there there are many uh, there are many things, right? Um, the kind of tree that you shouldn't plant in your house, right? So there are so many things, right? So many things in our you know, these are all rights and rituals. As long as you are you have a right understanding, right intention, then you will have a right speech, right action, right livelihood. That's all, right? That's all. <laughs> then um, maybe I normally share this because it's important, because um, we're not our teacher. Uh, and Call me, and she went to get advice from me that she is going to move a new house. She is asking me on which direction she need to keep her shrine hall. <laughs> I told her, "You are the Dharma teacher. You can face your shrine hall anywhere you like. <laughs> the direction which is good for you, you know, for your house, right?" So there's no such a, uh, such a teaching that you should, play, you should face your house or your shrine hall. You know, it doesn't matter. As long as you, are, uh, you have a right speech, right action, right livelihood, right? It doesn't matter. It's very important, you know. It's important to know. If you have a such understanding, you will have a right liberation. Your mind will be liberated from all these superstitions, all these superstitions. And I think many people have, uh, many people are not free, not liberated, regarding, uh, so, you know, so many things, right? So many things. Even to take a trip, you choose auspicious days like that, right? So there are so many things. But only you become sort of partner. You're, you will be, fully liberated from all these superstitions and rites and rituals. So there's no, how to say, we, we have to try, right? We have to try to liberate our mind from all these rites and rituals, you know, superstitions. <clears throat> Buddhism is always tolerant to what local cultures, customs, rights and rituals. Buddhism is very tolerant. So long as they do not harm others and yourself, Buddhists are, not, Buddhists are allowed to perform them freely. Normally, Buddhism is very free. Normally, um, Buddhist monks, they, they, they practice tolerance to what the cultures, custom, rights and rituals. But um, it is important to differentiate between rights and rituals and the real teachings of the Buddha. Very important, very important. <clears throat> Normally people just look at outside rights and rituals. Then they do not, uh, they do not go into deeper, deeper or teachings of the Buddha, right? So because of that, they trying to escape from religion. Religion. People in ancient India believe that. Not only ancient India, even right now, they can purify their sins. They can purify their sin by practicing, by performing rites and a lot of different type of rites and rituals. 
So we cook one soda from in Gautrani Kaya, Chonda soda. We call it Chonda soda. In Gautrani Kaya, chapter 10, soda number 176. I have already sent to you, sent it to you. So if, you, if we read this soda, we can learn uh, rice and riches um, prevailing in Asian India, Asian India. Chonda is a, if you look at, if you um, read Mahabri Nibbana Soda, you will see his name. He is the last donor of the food for the Buddha, you know, for the Buddha. And after eating his food, the Buddha passes away. Very lucky, you know. The Buddha said that the meal he eat the last time, and also the meal he eat just before his enlightenment, equal reset, the Buddha said. Because uh, Chonda may think that after eating his offering, his meal, the Buddha died. Then he may have a sorrow and regress. So to avoid that, the Buddha taught to venerate Ananda to uh, the Buddha leave the message for Chonda. So uh, I want to I want to read out a little bit, little bit. So that's how far. Actually, this one is not the last time they met. They met. Maybe this is the first time, you know, Chonda and the Buddha met. That's how I heard. On one occasion, the Blessed One was dwelling at Pawa in the mango group of Chonda, the smith sand. Then Chonda, the smith sand, approached the blessed one, paid homage to him, and sat down to the one side. The blessed one then said to him, Chonda, whose right of purity do you perform? Rights of purity, rights and riches, do you perform? Bandi, I prefer the rites of purity prescribed by Brahmins of the West who carry around who carry around water pots, wear garlands, garlands of water plants, tin the sacred fire. Here you can see there are a lot of rites and rituals, right? When you look at religious leaders, you know. They use a lot of items. They hold, you know, stiff. They hold a lot of objects in their hand. They wear different design, you know, different designs. All these are, you know, uh, kind of rice and riches, rice and riches. When you look at uh, uh, Okay, here, uh, when you look at uh, this one, you know, who carry around water pot, wear garlands of water plants, tend the secret fire, and mark themselves in water. Actually, here, Chonda, by the time when, the Buddha, when he met with the Buddha for the first time, the Buddha is asking, uh, whose rites of purity do you prefer? He prefer the rites of purity prescribed by the Brahmin. The Brahmin of the West, living in the West, West side, maybe. And how Chonda do the Brahmins of the West prescribe their rites of purity? How, you know, by following all the rites and rituals, they can purify their sin, you know? <laughs> here you can see that here, Bandi, the Brahmins of the West enjoy a disciple this. Cam good man, having got up early, you should stroke the ground from your bed. You know, very weird, right? Very weird. A kind of rice and riches, right? It's nothing to do with the, the nobody full path. Nothing to do with the right, uh, right action, right speech, and right livelihood, right? 
if you don't strike the ground, you should strike what calm them. <laughs> if you don't strike what calm them, you should stroke regress. If you don't strike regress, you should tin the secret fire. If you don't tin the secret fire, you should pay homage to the sand with the referential salutation. Pay homage to the sand. You should immerse yourself in water three times, including evening, three times a day. Actually, earlier we, we learned the soda, right? When you go to in the morning, then all you are seen, you do nighttime or a cleanse like that. It is in this way that the Brahmins of the West prescribe their rights of purity. It is their rights of purity that I prefer. He prefer their rights of purity. Then the Buddha said, Chonda, purification in the nobles, nobles one's disciples. The nobles one meet the Buddha. The Buddha's disciple is quite different from the rites of purity prescribed by the Brahmin. Totally different, right? If you do not do unwholesome, unwholesome things with your body, with your speech, in your mind, you're pure, you're pure. All the rites and rituals are not important. Not important. So I will show with the picture so that you can see very clearly, right? Bathing in the holy water. People believe that they can cleanse their sins. They can purify their sins by bathing in the water three times a day, three, time, uh, three times a year, right? This is in ancient, current India, not ancient India. Still following this uh, rites of purity, rites of purity. Especially in the Ganji rivers, in the Ganji rivers. It's considered as a holy river in India. So there are particular time when you, when you bathe in the water in the Ganji river in particular time, more powerful, more powerful. You have a salvation. You have a total purity, you know, from sin. How about this one? Where, where it is? Bali, you know, in India. Bali in India. They are also Hindu, actually. Most, uh, some of the Balinese, you know. Mm. Balinese Hindu, you know, they also believe that same thing, right? They go to this. This, this is only one of the well-known water pond, you know. They go into the, uh, they go, they dive into the water. You can see that water represents purity. Every religion, right? Every religion. Even in Buddhist countries, uh, every New Year, so they celebrate uh, smashing the water, right? And I wash, you know, uh, so they pour the water. This is a Hindu uh, belief, Hindu belief. Uh, all the unwholesome deed that you have done in the old years are purified with the water. But actually, in Buddhist country, they play water <laughs> just for fun, yeah? <laughs> not, not, not for the purity normally, normally, right? Of course, they do a lot of good deeds in the new year, at the beginning of new year. Uh, so in that way, they get purity. So here also in, uh, in, in the same time, bay, you see that, right? So people bathe in the water. They believe that water carry a lot of power and they can cleanse their sins, their sins. Turn in the sacred fire, even today, stay following in India. So it's a very important ceremonies. There's very important rites and rituals. So they put a lot of things like a geese, wine, like that, butter, like that. 
So they, they, they put a lot of things in the, inside the fire. So through the fire, they pay home to their God. In return for that, they want to receive blessing from the boat, uh, from, from their God, from the, from the God. So ultimately, they will get salvation. So they believe that uh, uh, the fire or smoke will bring their prayer to their God. And the God will know and the God will bless you like that. So according to Bodhisattva, it is rites and rituals. So your prayer will not be answered if you are doing like that according to Bodhisattva. So even, even the Westerner, uh, they're trying to perform these rites and rituals. Then, worshiping the sun, still, even today, stay, you know, you can see that the sodas, which we are recorded, you know, uh, 2,500 years ago, stay, you know, uh, Indian, you know, Indian nowadays, they are still following, worshiping the sun. So they have to get up early. So you have to clean your, your body. And so they believe that by worshiping the, uh, the sun, you will have influence in the society. You will become scholars. You will become intelligent, and like, like that. So, worshiping the same way, get rid of your greed, desire, etc. So, normally we will get up late, right? <laughs> when you follow this type of rising rituals, you have a lot of benefit, right? You need to get up early, you have to clean, you have to make a lot of effort, right? Then you have a lot of, you know, um, desire in your mind, strong desire in your mind. I want to become a uh, successful, you know, like that. Influence in the society like that. If you have weak power, so your prayer will be, not because of worshiping the sun, because of determination, right? You, have, you need to get up early, then you have a determination in your mind, desire in your mind, weak power in your mind, right? So, it's also one of the practices uh, we consider as, according to Buddhism, rites and rituals, or should be the same. In Chona Soda, the Buddha mainly talk about 10 causes of karma. We call it karma pata. When you want to do Hosan karma and Hosan karma, these are the causes or the basis, you know? The causes of Ahosan Gamma are called Akusala Gamma Bata, and the causes of Hosan Gamma are called Kusala Gamma Bata. Kusala Gamma Bata. Hosan Gamma, Ahosan Gamma, you know, good deed, bad deed. So in this soda, the Buddha explained that only these causes of karma make you pure and impure. So if you are doing a wholesome deed, you are impure. If you are doing wholesome deed, you are pure, like that. Main thing is like a right speech, right action, right livelihood. You are pure, according to Buddhism. So there is nothing else that make man pure and impure. So there's no rites and rituals. Rites and rituals will not make you pure or impure. So that's very important concept in Buddhism. Concept of purity in Buddhism. Theory of purity in Buddhism. So in many places, the Buddha stated very clearly three types of purity. The purity of the body. If you are not doing and wholesome deed. If you are doing wholesome deed, you are pure bodily. If you are speaking right speeches, you know, if you are avoiding and wholesome, you know, speeches, verbally you are pure. 
if you are if you don't have a unwholesome mental actions, mentally you are pure like that. Very simple concept. Very simple concept. <clears throat> okay, up to here, any question? And if you want to discuss. <clears throat> Okay, no question. Then we we'll continue to learn. We have a ten causes of unwholesome karma. So three bodily action: destroying life or killing, panadipada; taking what is not given or stealing, arinadana; engaging in sexual misconduct, kamisu mechachara. Actually, all these one right? in the five precepts, right? The five precepts. So that means if you're avoiding uh, these unwholesome bodily actions, you are pure in body, bodily pure, you know, you're pure. So you don't need to follow, you, you don't need to perform any rites and rituals. Any rites and rituals. We will have a four vowel actions um, speaking falsehood or telling a lie, and speaking divisively. So you are speaking. Divided speeches, using divided speeches, pisunavacha, and speaking harshly when you're talking harshly, you are not pure. And speaking destructively, in destructive way, so sampapalapa. Actually, the last one is a different, my own translation, because I earlier I follow Peku Bori translation, but I'm trying to follow literal translation, Sampapalapa, speaking distractively. So there are so many, uh, so many ways that destroy our benefit, our well-beings. So they are, so actually the last one is the most comprehensive, um, uh, it cover, you know, so many things. Not just, not just the idea chatter, not just the gossip, you know. Later we have to learn. So these are the four unwholesome verbal actions. If you are, you know, doing all these four, you are not pure. You are not pure verbally. But if you are avoiding all these ones, if you are doing, if you are talking good speeches, verbally you are pure. You know, very con very simple concept. So we will have a three mental actions um, having full of longing, a page, having a way, and holding wrong views. So if you have <clears throat> three unwholesome mental actions, you are impure. You are impure. If you avoid it, if you don't have all these three, you are pure. Very concept, very simple concept, right? Con concept. <laughs> According to Chonda Soda, so the Buddha said that these Chondas are ten causes of Aosangama. Aosangama, Aliya, right? Three bodily Aosangama, four Fave Aosangama, three Mente Aosangama. So Chonda, so these are the ten, ten causes of Hosangama. If one engages, in these ten causes of unwholesome karma, then if one tend the secret fire, one is impure. Or if one doesn't tend the secret fire, one is impure. Whether you do or you don't do, stay impure, right? Then the Buddha said that if one pay home to the sun with the reverential salutation, one is impure. If you are engaging, you know, ten and wholesome karma. If one doesn't pay homage to the sun with the reverential salutation, one is impure. Whether you do or you don't do, stay impure. If one immerses one in water three times, including evening, uh, one is impure, you know, stay impure. For what reason? For what reason? Because these ten causes of unwholesome karma are themselves impure and defiling. 
whether you do, you follow rites and rituals, you are not pure. Because these, if you are committing a whole sankama, so you are impure, you know, you are impure. It's very, very important concept, you know. It is because people engage in these ten concepts of Aung San Gama that hell, the animal realm, the fear of the spirit, and other bad destinations seen. Because of those Aung San Gama, so you, you went to Aung San destinations, not because of rites and rituals. You cannot escape from um, going to bad destinations just because of rites and rituals. Then, uh, ten causes of Aosan Gama. Abstaining from ten causes of Aosan actions, number one. Number two, fulfilling virtual behaviors. It's called ten causes of Aosan Gama. Two qualities, you know? It's, a, it's about sila, right? We're talking about sila. Avoiding evil and doing good deed. So it's called Tang Causes of Hose and Gamma. <clears throat> it won't engage in Tang Causes of Hose and Gamma whether or not you perform rites and rituals, any type of rites and rituals. One is pure. Whether you don't do or you don't, you do. It doesn't matter. You are stay pure. Because these ten causes of whole sankama are themse, pure and purifying. Because so there are some religious teachings, when you go to one place, you are impure, right? When you touch a person, you are impure, you become impure. In India they are untouchable people, right? So people cannot touch. If you touch, you know. Uh, you become impure. In Myanmar, there is a one uh, wrong concept. Uh, if you, as a man, if you go out underneath the, uh, how do you say, women clothes, impure. <laughs> <laughs> but it's very strong, you know. Even the lady, educated lady, they do not, or you know, they do not wash um, men clothes and women clothes together. Uh, so this is a very wrong concept according to Buddhism. Here, right? Purity and impurity not, be, not, not depend on the clothing, right? Not depend on anything. Depend on good deed and bad deed, right? So there are many things, right? There are many things in a society and everywhere, not only in the Asian country, in the West also, right? The also. In the West, there is one, uh, one custom or superstition. When they get married, they have to break. They have to broke the plate. Huh? When they get married, I don't know, is it truth? So when, uh, when they get married, they have to break the same plate and, you know, it's a kind of rice and rituals. Eh? You don't know, right? I've heard of that uh, custom, you know? Mm. So a kind of rice and rituals, right? But even though they do that, they stay time for us, right? <laughs> it's not because of that, you know, rice and rituals. Okay. It is because people engage in these ten causes of whole and gamma that the, that the deva, human beings, and other good destination are seen. Because of good deed, you were born in a good destination, not because of rites and rituals, rites and rituals. I think this sort of is very beautiful, very simple teaching, right? Simple teaching. If you have a right understanding, you will be liberated from a lot of superstitions, a lot of wrong concept, right? A lot of wrong concept. There are some religious monuments that women are prohibited to go. Say superstitions or custom. 
then to study about the purity, sorry, that to study the law of karma, the law of karma. I want to quote one soda, so I already seen today, you know, today. A seat bandaka pota soda. A seat bandaka soda is a headman, headman in the village. So um, one time he came to see the Buddha, and he said that uh, some Brahmin living in the you know the same the same Brahmin you know the same Brahmin who live in the village, sorry in, in the west, and also who, who carry about water pot, and also wearing the uh, uh, water water plant water plant. And they normally uh, do perform a lot of uh, rites and rituals. So by doing so, they are sending the disciples into the heaven, to the heaven. Actually, I have already seen. If you haven't read, trying to read, very beautiful sotas. And you will have a clear and proper understanding about the theory of camp, the law of camp. Then the Buddha, uh, actually, according, I'm trying to summarize, if a person engage in 10 causes or unwholesome actions, later we will learn in detail. Right now, I just want to, I'm trying to talk about importance of these 10 causes or unwholesome, unwholesome. If a person engage in 10 causes or unwholesome actions, that the person will be reborn in a bad destination. Prayers, wishes, cannot send him to heaven. Very important, right? Even though religious leaders, how hard they pray, how hard they perform rites and rituals, they cannot send them to heaven. If somebody, after doing an ozan deed, then they will go to an ozan destinations. So any religious leader cannot do anything. So here and then, uh, the Buddha gave a simile of a huge boulder, a very big rock. Somebody throw a huge boulder into the pool. pool. So it go down up to the bottom. People gather around the pond, pool, and they pray. They circumambulate and they pray. Dear acute Buddha, come up. Come, come up. <laughs> like that. Can you do that? No. Any prayer, any rising prayer cannot do that. Cannot do that. Like that, somebody after doing a thousand deed, um, uh, they were reborn in a thousand destination. So prayer wishes cannot send them to heaven. The Buddha said that. Because one of the, uh, sorry, a Sip Pandaka Buddha had man, he talked to the Buddha. So the Brahmin, they have a uh, rites and rituals. They will pray for the Tasipasin to send him to heaven. So he requested the Buddha, can you send all the people in the world to a, a good destination, heavenly world, heavenly world? So that entire people go to heavenly world, you know. So no hell, you know, no people in the hell. The Buddha is talking that, no, cannot do that, cannot do that, no. Then uh, another one is, if the same soda, if a person engages in 10 causes of wholesome karma, kusala karma, that the person will be reborn in a good destination. Prayers, wishes cannot send him to hell. After doing good deed, sorry, after doing good deed, um, then uh, that person will be reborn in a good de destination. So how hard they pray or, you know, wishes cannot send him to hell. So the Buddha gave a simile or a part of ghi and why. Somebody bring 
the bottle of green and oil under the bottom of the water and break the pot. The fragrance of the pot will go down, no? will go down. And the ghee and the oil will come up. Same thing, people come around the pool and they pray, dear ghee and dear oil, go down, go down. Cannot do that, right? Cannot do that. <laughs> Very beautiful, right? The prayers and wishes cannot send them to head. So, according to Bodhisattva, the real karma, right? It is important that our karma will bring us to go, up, go down or, you know, go up. It depends on our, our good deed. So there's a question here. Why we are doing that? As a Buddhist, we normally go and visit the wake, right? We chant. We do a lot of chantings. What are the purpose of these chantings? It is a kind of prayer? No, it's not a kind of prayer. It talk about the quality of the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha, radiation of the mid, separating of the metta, and a contemplation of uh, the nature of life, contemplation of the nature of our body, like that. <coughs> At the end of our chanting, we share the merit. The main thing is sharing of the merit. It's a good deed, accumulating good deed for the participants, participants, and also it is a good deed for the family members, especially when the deceit passing um, was born as a beta. He will see, you know, our chanting. We are chanting for him or for her. And then he or she will be very happy. Then he or she will rejoice our good deed. So that rejoice, that happiness will bring him to heaven. Horrible. If the deceit person does not rejoice, be angry, <laughs> right? There may be some, you know, some occasion, you know, the deceit person, that person may not be happy, then he will not get, right? The share of the merit. That's very important. That's the nature of our chanting, according to Tridhavara, you know, according to Tridhavara. I know, I don't know Mayana much, much about it. So, uh, also, it's not a prayer, you know. Chanting, uh, recollection of the quality of triple gene, and uh, we, are, we are separating our metta, and our contemplating uh, our, the nature of our life, the nature of our body. Then we share the merit. So that'll be the, the purpose. That'll be the purpose. If the deceit person feel happy, get the merit. If the, the deceased person was born in hell, in heaven as a human being, he cannot, he will not know it. He will not know it. But probably we are likely to be as a beta, you know, right? People, you know, very, a lot of chances, right? Because we have a lot of attachment to this body, attachment to the, our, our family, our house, our life. Because of that, people are likely to be born as a beta. When they see them, when they see that we are chanting, very happy. So therefore, we are not going chanting for uh, other, you know, follow other religions. They may not be happy, right? It's about the Christian, the same person, we go there and we chant, very angry, you know. <laughs> we're, not get the, uh, we're not get the merit. Is it useless? So therefore, it's important that if your parents um, is a Buddhist, trying to fulfill their wish, you know. So therefore, we 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 encounter that the family members are not Buddhist, but the the passing Buddhist. So they are very kind that they follow their passing desire. Okay. Any question? Okay, uh, microphone.
Bande. So uh, my question is about the chanting. So if we understand the meaning of the chant, um, yeah, we contemplate on the triple gem, the quality of the triple gem was ever, and uh, we are accumulating the merits. But uh, if um, we, we, we do have a lot of people, they, 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 they chant, but without knowing the meaning. So will that become rites and ritual? They are chanting, but they don't know the meaning. They are just reading the words. And, yeah, and, and even for the people we are chanting too, if they don't understand, will that become the rites and ritual? No, no. Actually, if you are turning chanting, you have a kind of faith. Your mind is concentrated. Concentration, mindfulness, that is meditation. That's meditation. It's very fruitful. So in Buddhism, we always say that uh, even, uh, even smaller chanting without understanding where uh, it's meaningful, honestly, it's fruitful, fruitful. But of course, if you know the meaning, much better. Chanting without understanding, one good deed. Chanting with understanding, much better. No chanting, practicing, much better. No chanting, but you understand the meaning of metta, then you put into practice without chanting, much better, right? You do a lot of chanting, no practicing, less, very less, you know, Right? So that's very important. All the teachings of the Buddhas for are to practice. To practice. Of course, chanting will help you a lot. But a lot of chanting, no practice, you will have very less good deed, you know? Practicing, uh, practicing teachings of the Buddha is the best. Understand. Thank okay. you. Uh, Bhante. There's one um, uh, transferring of merit. Uh, people usually have a bowl of water and then they pour. Is that considered a ritual? If you do not understand, if you just follow what other people do, maybe we can say that it's a ritual. But um, it's a, uh, a kind of uh, kind of symbol, actually, water. Uh, people use water to concentrate their mind. Suppose we transfer the matter without pouring the water. So our concentration is less, right? Less. We can transfer merit without a bowl of water. You can do that, but it's not very strong, right? Suppose a group of people, when passing, hold the water and pour the water, full of happiness and joy, you know? So because of that, we use that uh, water pool and pour in the water. It's simple, it's simple. The main thing is uh, to share the merit. And whether it is a rice or rituals, if you are following without, under, without you know, Proper understanding. Maybe we can say they say kind of riches, kind of riches. But here it's important that uh, as long as you are not a sort of pana, you will stay follow rising riches. But the most important thing is uh, you need to remove clinging. You know, so much clinging to rising riches. You know, yeah. Then Bante. During Visa Day, when you bathe the Buddha, it's also a ritual, right? <laughs> yeah, kind of ritual, it's a kind of ritual. Because the, followed by so many, you know, not only Mahayana, Tidavara also. In Myanmar, we have a eight corner in the, most of the pagodas. One corner, one Buddha statue. People, they pour the water into the Buddha. The kind of rituals, you know? Of course, it's a ritual, rising right? rituals. But it will hey, you know, it attracts so many people, <laughs> especially young people, right? Suppose uh, 
as a lay person, if I'm a lay person, I have a, then I have a same problem in my relationship problem or maybe a problem in my job. Then I will visit Pagoda. Then I will do pour in the water. It's very meaningful for me, right? For me. Just like that. It's a kind of attracting the public. Of course, in earlier time, I thought that Rites and rituals are not important. But right now, I believe that without rites and rituals, we cannot attract people. You know? It is important to have a rites and rituals. You can see that. What's that day? You know, next month. Many people come to Tempe just to receive blessing. You know? Blessing also a kind of rites and rituals but it's important to attract the public. So, uh, if we have a proper understanding, of course, we still accept, we still receive rice and re uh, blessing from the bandy, we still do it. But if you become sort of pan, these are not important for you. The most important thing is right view, right intention, right action, right speed, right livelihood, right effect, right mindfulness, and right concentration. All these are the most important ones. If, if, if you have it, the nobody for, if you are walking on the nobody for path, rising rituals are not important. But you shouldn't have a, I want to say, guilty conscience in your mind if you are following all these ones. But the most important is not to have too much um, clinging, you know, Attachment. It it will create a lot of problem, you know, in the people's life. Uh, so there is one belief in Myanmar. If you go a uh, certain number, actually I'm not quite clear, uh, quite certain, you know. Suppose if he, they cannot take a trip, eight people cannot take a trip. So you will face. Uh, danger in the on the way, you know. And what they do, and they they bring one rock. Consider as one person. You know, <laughs> you know it's a, a kind of superstition, right? If you have a, such superstition, it create a lot of problem, right? It became a how to say um, obsession in the mind. So they have a worry that something. Would, something will happen on the way, you know, like that. These are actually, these are a kind of rising and rage or superstitions. Thank okay. you, one thing. Oh, question over there. Yeah, uh, good evening, Bante. Yeah, I think rights and Rachel probably uh, should not be encouraged too much. Uh, if it's too much, it becomes superstition. However, I find that uh, rights and breaches can bring people together. Mm, and you're right. and uh, I think it's a good practice because if you practice a religion by yourself, uh, you might not really progress that much. You know, uh, in the older day, probably it's still more possible. But now I think, uh, but even Buddha say that we should learn from others, not just. Can you, you know, remove the marks? <laughs> because, uh, yeah. Not very clear, is it? Sorry. Clear. Yeah. yeah, I'm saying that actually if we can learn from others, I think Buddha also, uh, you know, uh, did mention saying that we should learn from um, others, especially learn from monks, and then speak, uh, uh, listen to the Dharma delivered by other people, rather than just learn by ourselves. Mm. So I think we get people together to practice Buddhism is very important. Um, and also, uh, certain rites and rituals can uh, strengthen our confidence. Just like when we pray to Buddha image, it's not superstition because we are respecting Buddha. We thank him for bringing Dharma to us. So I think certain rites and rituals is still good for Buddhism. Yeah. But uh, paying homage to the Buddha is not a really rites and rituals. <laughs> Actually, it's a kind of recollection of the Buddha, right? Yeah, it's a respect, but uh, yeah, you yeah. Know, some people might think that it's a kind of uh, you know, uh, procedure that we have to go through. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. But people have some thinking 
if you keep certain design or the Buddha image, will help you to grow your business like that, you know? This is a, a kind of superstition or a yeah. kind of rise and rage. Actually, it's not, not that. So we pay homage to the Buddha image uh, to just to recollect his quality, right? So in that way, then our mind became pure. It is just a, an, ob honestly, an object, it's an object to help our, you know, to help um, on our meditation, recollection of the Buddha, recollection of the Buddha. <clears throat> Even, you know, it's interesting, I think many of you may not know that, uh, Tedavara school earlier trying to uh, reject to pay homage to the Buddha image. There's no Buddha image in earlier time, in earlier time. So people from Greece, the Macedonia, right? Alexander the Great. So they trying to conquer, they trying to conquer the Asian. So Greece, they have a, uh, how do you say, scrap, scripture, right? Scriptures. So when one became very famous, they were making scriptures. Then when they come to India, so they hear about the Buddha. There's no images. Why? Why? Actually, the Buddha is very famous, you know. You should have uh, images. Therefore, they make a Buddha image. Actually, the Buddha images are not the, on the, on the, the look of the Buddha. May not, may not be, you know. According to, according to, uh, how to say, how to say that, according to uh, historians, according to historians, so the Greeks, they're trying to do the Buddha image by looking at Apollo, Apollo, you know, Apollo God, Apollo God. You know, the image of the Buddha is like a Apollo, you know. When you look at the earlier Buddha images. So, uh, most of the Tiravara schools, uh, the monks from Tiravara, they're trying to reject, you know. No, we shouldn't uh, create Buddha image. The Buddha is, how to say, the second to none. Second to Nen. We cannot compare with the, the Buddha. We shouldn't make uh, any images, you know. These images will not represent the Buddha. The Buddha is very handsome. So if we are making images, you know, very ugly, you know. <laughs> this is an ancient, you know, concept. We don't have the image of King As uh, Asoka, right? King Ashoka. Because uh, this is an ancient concept. King Ashoka is very great king. So there shouldn't be no scriptures, script, uh, scriptures here, yeah, like that. So therefore, uh, because of Western concept, we have Buddha images. So very interesting, right? Very interesting. So therefore, if we have a lot of images in the temple, it's a, actually it's very dangerous, you know? I would say that, very dangerous. Uh, we shouldn't have so many images in the temple. So I'm, I'm very, very glad that we have only a few, right? One in the Buddha, you know, in the shrine hall, one in the Bori tree. There's only one, you know? I, I mean, what I mean is, one Buddha image in one place, you know? It's easier for us to concentrate. If we have a lot of images, oh, to which image I, I have to face, you know, I have to recollect like that. So therefore, um, actually the Buddhists, they went to offer, right? They went to offer Buddha images. When you visit to uh, Sri Dukong Pagoda in Yango, so many Buddha images. I'm very uh, happy, you know, by seeing all these ones, you know, because people want to donate. Because of that, they do one Buddha image here, and another next to the Buddha image, you know. It's not good, not good. 
So for that reason, um, people from other religions, they to the Buddhists are idol worshiper. We worship the uh, images, no images. Actually, in earlier time, no images, right? No images. Uh, before I think uh, images appear you know, after maybe four or five hundred years after the Buddha passes away. Passes away. If you know that, it's no point to have so many images in the temple, in your house, in your house. Okay. Uh, microphone here. Uh, because for recording. <laughs> Bhante, you came from Myanmar. Have you been to Street Agon? Street Agon. Yes, oh, the, yeah, golden, yeah. the temple yeah, yeah, yeah. there. And Bhante, there's uh, something very special about it. My friends were telling me about it, that uh, there are many, many statues in Street Agon. And sometimes they were asked for faith. They could ask for wishes or they could ask for certain uh, thoughts. Huh? For example, I want to buy a house. Could I buy the house? And then there's a... I believe it's a rock beside it or a coconut and they will lift it up. If they're able to lift it up, it means that it's okay. It's in the temple in Sri Dagon. I've not tried it, but my friends were telling me there was one question. Uh. So I'm quite curious as to whether it's right or ritual or whether it's superstition. Second question, uh, Bhante, you came from Myanmar. There's okay. a golden rock temple. Okay. There's a golden rock huh? and the women are not allowed to go up to the temple yeah. to circulate. Is it a superstition because I'm a woman? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, second question is, of course, it is a superstition and custom. I'm not sure. The third question... It is, it is. Uh, the Bodhi tree was transferred by Sangamitra, mm. the daughter of <clears throat> Asoka, to Sri, Lanka, yeah. to Sri Lanka. But again, the woman is not allowed to go up to the highest point to circulate it. I'm not sure. I've not been to Sri Lanka, <laughs> but I'm I'm just wondering whether is a kind of is it a kind of superstition or is it a certain wisdom that it was not told to us? It's something that's unknown to us. No wisdom, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so I will, I will go to I will go to this, your second question because she is talking about Korean dog pagoda. Uh, it's situated in a dangerous place. If a woman go there. It's very dangerous for the women. Men, okay. <laughs> because of that, I think Asian people, they trying to pro prohibit. So women are not allowed. But there are many places that women are prohibited. So actually, these are just superstitions. These are just custom, nothing to do with the Buddhism. And also, the question, the first question, um, if you offer coconut and banana and lift and make a wish, may I buy a new house? If it is truth, Burmese will become the richest people in the world. <laughs> so they will become the richest in the world, right? No need to walk. Just go and pray, right? So therefore, the Buddha said that prayers will not make any difference. So normally when we pray to the Buddha, it is a kind of wish, right? kind of wish. May I be well and happy. May I have a, a, a happy life. So this is our wish, our desire, you know. We just express our desire in front of the Buddha. The Buddha will not answer your wishes, you know. The Buddha already died, right? The Buddha already died, you know, 2,600 years ago, 2,500 years ago, right? The Buddha the Buddha cannot fulfill your wishes, but your mind can fulfill your wishes. Only the mind, you know? So uh, there is one old member, and whenever she comes to temple, she always greet, greet me. And she said that, she, all, she very often said that, because of the blessing of the Buddha, I'm healthy. Blessing of the Buddha. You know? Because of the Buddha, I'm healthy. He is, she is about, I think, uh, 80 plus by the time. So at the age of 86, I think she died. 
we visited her in the hospital. And when I visit, I remember, she said, because of blessing of the Buddha, I'm healthy, you know. Not because of the Buddha. Because of the faith in the triple gene. She have a kind of faith in the triple gene that going to Tempe um, is a good for her. And it increase her faith and also her belief that mind with power, you know, will help her to, I don't know, say, to feel happy or to feel healthy, right? So the Buddha cannot do. So there are many places that, that um, people say that when you go to this pagoda, so you just make a wish, your wishes will be fulfilled. No, no, no way, no way, you know? But only your mind. Support you believe that when you go to, uh, you're looking for a job, looking for a job, then you believe that visiting a temple where, uh, I don't say, you will get a job. Then you visit that temple, then you get a job. You start to believe because of visiting temple, or pay home to the Buddha. No. Not because of that, because of your effect, right? So there are some Burmese who come to pray in the shrine hall. So some got a job, some have to go back. You know? Not because of the Buddha, you know? Because of their effort, because of their karma, right? They need to make a lot of effort to get a job. So the Buddha cannot help you but only your mind. You know? Your mind, so therefore, the Buddha said that uh, mind is full run of everything, right? Full run of everything. Mano bobinga ma dhamma. Mano sita mano maya in Dhammabara, the first verse, you know? Very important. Not the Buddha image, not the pagoda, not the tempe. Your mind, right? Your mind. People come to envy, some people, they lost their jobs, job, right? Not because of coming to Tempe, because of our effect, right? Because of our, you know, karma, our action, our action. You get a job, not because of coming to Tempe, like that. <laughs> okay, so... Then I want to uh, quote one soda. This is a very important one. We call it Popana soda. Popana soda. This is a, one of the bit soda from our bit, uh, our, uh, our big, uh, our chanting books. Our chanting books. It's one of the, one of, one of the sodas. Popana soda. In Gautam Nikaya, chapter 3, soda number 155. So this soda is used as a prayer or chanting, protection, uh, chanting for protection. So in this soda, so we can learn Buddhist concept of the auspiciousness, the auspicious, or theory of auspiciousness. Usually, Bhikkhu Bodhi he gave the name the auspiciousness. An, op- an auspicious day, an auspicious day. A good day, no? Good day. In Myanmar, we have 11 praetas that we chant, uh, how to say, uh, one by one, one by one. Most of the tempe, actually, almost all the tempe, they, they chant 11 praetas. So the last one is this soda, Popana soda. <clears throat> So this is from uh, Inkotra Nikaya, chapter 3, Sura number 155. This is a, one of the soda I like. Very beautiful sodas. Very beautiful. We can learn the theory of karma, you know, theory of karma, the law of karma. People would like to have uh, auspicious things in their life, right? Auspicious day, auspicious objects like that. Then the Buddha said that, Bhikkhus, 
those beings who engage in a good conduct by body, speech, and mind in the morning, have a good morning. Very beautiful, right? Beautiful. We always say good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Actually, rice and rituals or anything that you see, anything that you hear, it's not all special things. When you are doing good deed with your body, with your speech, with your mind, you will have a good morning. Then the Buddha said that those beings who engage in a good conduct by body, speech, and mind in the afternoon have a good afternoon. Those beings who engage in a good conduct by body, speech, and mind in the evening have a good evening. So if you are doing good deed in the morning, afternoon, then evening, an auspicious day. It is auspicious day, right? It is auspicious evening because we are doing good deed in the evening, right? So very, I want to say, very simple, logical, right? No rice and ritual here, right? No rice and ritual here. No superstition, no caste, you know, no caste. Very important. It depends, the Buddha decides what you do with the body, speech, and mind. If you, do, if you are doing good things, an auspicious day. So, in this soda, I think I want you to read this soda. So, in this soda, there are some verses that talk about an auspicious day. So, if you are doing a good deed with your body, speech, and mind, you have a, a good astrology, a good moment, you know. Uh, I want to say a good blessing like that. Actually, this is very simple, you know, very simple, easy to read, you know, easy to understand. Popana. Popana is actually in the morning, morning. Then also, I want to quote one soda from uh, from uh, Soda Nipada. So it talk about the law, the law of um, the law camp. What's the last soda? One is not an outcast by birth, nor by birth is one a Brahmin. By action, one became an outcast. By action, one became a Brahmin, holy person, holy person. So here, literally, Brahmin, but it's holy person. It's not a bind bath, you became an outcast. So actually in India, so the caste system is very, very strong. Even in China, right? State caste system, state caste system. Bind bath, if you were born in a particular race, particular clan, consider as not good, right? If you were born in a particular clan or family, you became very, became very holy. No. No, according to Buddhism, not like that. By action, one became a holy man. By action, one became an outcast, very bad person. I wear the rope. If I'm doing wrong things, evil things, outcast, outcast, not a holy person. Not because of this, this rope, you know? because of my action, because of my action. Very beautiful. So therefore, in, uh, when we talk about the law of karma, so the Buddha always, always use these lines, you know, the Buddha asks his followers to reflect the idea of ownership of karma. <clears throat> so, and I am the owner of my karma, I will be the heir or whatever karma, good or bad, that I do. Very simple one, right? So whatever good or bad you do, so you will be owner of that karma. That karma. So to talk about, to learn about the law of karma. So 
in Damabara. So I like also this vase, the well-known one, well-known and well-known vase. I give the name Do It Yourself DIY. <laughs> in Buddhism, this concept is important. The Buddha said that don't make kitchen art happen. You yourself should make the effort. The targeters are the one who only show the way. A cutter or the targeter. So the Buddha shows the way. What are the good? What are the bad? You have to make it. You have to make an effort. To make kitchen art happen. So Buddhism, you are the creator of your own your, your life, right? Your life. If you do good, so your life will be good. If you do bad, your life will be miserable, you know? You are creator of your own life. That's a very important concept in Buddhism. So we don't believe that somebody created for your own good. No, cannot. Okay, any question? So... Today we talk about theory of purity in Buddhism, theory of uh, uh, rising rituals, uh, rising rituals in Buddhism, like that, right? And also we talk about the law of karma. So, so later we will learn, next week we will talk about Hosan karma and Ahusan karma. We will discuss about in details, right? Okay, so let's. Yo vara tamba varo manu jesu sakya muni pakava katta kecho para katto pala vidya samangi Dance, Sukha, Dance, Saranatha, Mupe, Mi, Raga, Vi, Raga, Ma, Ninja, Ma, Sokan, Dama, Ma, Sangata, Ma, Pati, Kulan, Madura mi mamba kuna suwi patan Nata mupe mi yata cha te na mahapala mahu Chattu su su si su puri sa yuge su Atta cha pogala dhamma da sa te Sangami man saranatta Mupe me Satu, Satu, Satu. Good night, everyone.